Magandang araw, podmates! Howie Severino muli na nagpapaalala na nakakatalino ang mahabang attention span. Our guest today is an active service pioneer in the Philippine military, Colonel Francel Padilla, the first woman spokesperson of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Magandang araw sa inyo, Colonel Padilla, and congratulations on your new position. Thank you, and magandang araw din po, Sir Howie. Ay... Uh, Alam natin na so far, no, your main distinction uh, is you're the first uh, woman spokesperson of the AFP, the Armed Forces of the Philippines. So pioneer nga kayo, no? Uh, but uh, of course, you're very qualified uh, for this very visible role, no? Sabi nga ni General Zagala, who uh, was instrumental in in uh, selecting you, uh, you know, you were chosen because of your your specialized skills, no? Sa cyber domain, which is, of course, uh, you know, a new theater of warfare these days no kasi alam natin nagshi-shift na rin yung ating uh, military uh, orientation but i want to get the gender question out of the way no because uh, you know that's uh, been very that's, that's always part of the conversation uh, when talking about you and so uh, colonel padilla what made you choose the military uh, i mean did you when when did this ambition begin um particularly sir hindi siya ambition eh from to begin with no I think uh, I would like to believe na the stars aligned for me to get here. Um, there is nobody in the military in my family except po yung brother ko that went ahead of me na uh, he was a former member of PMA Class 97. So, siya lang din, sir. Parang in-encourage lang niya ako na, oh, mag-exam ka lang. Uh, kasi pag nag-exam nun, sir, papadyaryo, ganyan. So, yun lang. And then after that, para in encourage niya ulit ako to to take the medical exams to get like a full medical uh free medical checkup so to speak and then parang tuloy-tuloy na siya sir uh there was no turning back from there so when did you realize that uh pwede maging career para sa iyo basically sir siguro personality based siya um i'm more inclined to do something that is has more impact to the society so parang very fulfilling sir eh, na yung yung gagawin mo would have a significant impact to uh, the greater majority. Uh, in PMA, we were thought to be um, leaders in our own fields, no? So with that, ma- maramdaman mo how you handle men, paano ka magkakaroon ng influence and paano ka magkakaroon ng mga significant accomplishments by by leading uh, certain people to do uh, significant work. Of course, marami naman paraan para magkaroon ng impact sa society, you know. And uh, you know, a woman uh, joining the military, entering uh, the PMA, it's not a common journey, no. And sabi, I I read somewhere na uh, walo lang kayo mga babae, no, sa PMA graduating class mo, tama ba yon? So you're a really tiny minority in the PMA. Yes, yeah, sir. We entered PMA, um, eighteen thousand applicants. 1,100 females passed, and then 100 plus sir ang nag-medical. And we entered 400 kami, uh, 380 po doon ang lalaki, 20 ang females. And when we graduated, 10 po kami na babaeng sa class ko. But two of them are former um, members of 99 and joining our class. So talagang yung original 2000 sir, 8 po kami. So, kumusta naman yung uh, buhay sa PMA? Kasi, kumbaga, it's a very male-dominated institution. Meron ba kayong kaba? How has it changed since then? Sir, um, ang sabi nga namin, no, when you transition from civilian to military, from blue jeans to army green, uh, it was a very, very uh, ano, sir, rigid training in our part. So, Actually sir, pag plebo ka yung first class, yung first year, wala ka talagang time mag-isip. So what we did was live by the day. So ngayon, I survived this day, tomorrow is another day, no? Hanggang sa dumating na lang din kami na we finished that one whole rigid year of training because they have to erase our civilian antics, no? So kailangan matuto kaming as uh, to handle stress, pressure, no? So it's always shouting here and there. No, kaya namin, kahit magulo yung sitwasyon, kahit na chaotic, we can still think straight. That's something that was uh, taught to us, no? And we have to learn to appreciate the regimented life. When you embrace the regimented life, sir, 
it's everything is measured. So pati yung pag-swing ng arms namin, sir, 30 degrees at the back, 60 degrees in front, all of that is is measured. no? You cannot walk uh, by yourself. You have to be by twos, keep in step, you know, all of those things. So na, na, ano kami, sir, eh, parang na-condition kami to be very orderly and ano, um, we have learned to manage our time well and all those things. That's, that's Those are parameters for you to survive the rigid training. Did they have a special program for women? Were you treated any differently? I would like to say, sir, that we were part of the learning curve in PMA. Um, yung first batch kasi, sir, PMA class 97. So they were the guinea pigs of sort. Na they were treated as talagang equal with the males. No? So what the males do, you have to do this. But we are the first batch, na kami, sir, class 2000, is the first batch to complete the four years in the academy na may babae. So 97, 98, 99, and then 2000. So four years, sir, from first class to fourth class, may babae na. So there was a learning curve then in PMA, sir. So nung napuno na kami kompleto, sir, um, they also looked at other, ano na rin, other um, uh, mga uh, institutions, no? like the uh, US uh, Army, ganyan. So tinignan na din nila na ang babae may ibang physique. So, iba din po yung standards namin sa physical fitness test. So, inadapt na din po ng Philippines yung, yung mga ganon. Parang ano nga po kami, testing phase. No? So, ganon. Um, on one hand, there's there's a plus and a minus side to it, no? negative side to it. Um, that the challenge is really there no? to really, we are really pushed to the limits because sobrang konti namin, sir, we will have um, competitions na required ng female so pagka ikaw babae ka, lahat ng activities sir kasali ka. No? So I would I would be um playing for the the ano, the core squad. Lalaban kami sir sa Baguio Educational Athletic League ng athletics. Yung athletics sir sobrang dami niyang events, no? So may javelin, discus, shot put, 100 meter dash, 800 meter dash, 300 uh, 3 kilometer run. Sa yun, yun ikaw lahat yun sir. Kasi wala kang kapalitan. So parang we are pushed to the limits, but being pma -er, para kang superman sir eh. Yung just saying na pma -er ako, kaya ko to. Andun yung brute force and ano na, hindi mo dapat ipahiya yung pangalan ng institution mo. So siguro sir, that, keeps, that kept us going. And of course, it was the peak of our youth then. no? So mga bata naman kayong pumasok, sir, sir. Range is 17, 18, 19. So we are very adventurous. Yung katawan mo, kaya niya, sir, yung rigorous training. So I guess all of those factors came into play na rin, sir. Were you required to have a sport? Uh, and were you sports-minded? Um, hindi rin, sir. No? Before going in, um, only girl kasi ako, sir, na, na sa aming magkakapatid. So medyo kikay-kikay of sorts ako when, when I came in. But I was in the engineering, so male-dominated din siya. But really, when you go into PMA, you're one of the boys. There might be distinctions on the parameters ng scoring system. But you know, sometimes kami din sir yung nagpo-push siyang mga lalaki. Kasi pag meron medyo bagging down na lalaki hirap, kuunahan ko sa takbo yun sir. And anong mag mangyayari? Siyempre yung lalaki, mati-challenge siya. Oh, inunahan akong babae. So tendency sir, di ba, parang nagpo-push din siya to, to, form at their, to perform at their utmost. So siguro sir, ano, it's it's more of like um, encouraging na din the, the others to, ano sir, to perform mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I-share ko lang, no, kasi nabanggit mo nga yung Baguio. Isa ako sa mga nag-cover ng 1990 earthquake sa Baguio. You know, that's how old I am as a journalist. No? But naalala ko na, uh, nakita ko na tumutulong sa rescue yung mga kadete ng PMA. No? I mean, naka-white t-shirt pa. I mean, they were like very uh, regimented pa rin kahit na lumulusong sila sa sa mga ruins, no? yung mga collapsed houses to get uh, some of the victims out. no. So that was one of my first exposures actually to to PMA cadets. Yes, sir. No? Um, that was one of the highest din ng, ng PMA. Um, ano kami, sir? Eh? More of like a workforce na rin, sir. So anything na kailangan ng tulong sa Baguio City. Um, I remember, uh, hindi ko inabot, sir, yung earthquake. Eh. So mga seniors namin yun, mga 90s generation. Um, but in our case, we had uh, also a test of fire, so to speak, when we had the bushfires in Baguio City. So kami yun, sir, yung mga kadete would, would line up and you know pass bucket to bucket hanggang sa hanggang wee hours of the morning in order just for us to eliminate the fire. So ganun, sir, eh, uh, yung push kasi yan yung drive as cadets. 
nandoon kasi yung sol yung solidarity niyo sir as uh, magmimista you can do anything sir eh, as long as you're with together parang ganun so it's sort of yung pagiging mista namin sir we push each other to our limits then in whatever we do maybe it in sports be it in rescue missions it kasi adventurous kayong lahat did you ever have to endure any sexism or discrimination in the service sa tingin ko sir hindi naman yun mawawala no we cannot control the minds of our seniors our counterparts and all no so darating yung punto sir na mayroon pa rin comparison no so, they might feel na uh, pampered kayo kasi hiwalay kayo no hiwalay kayo ng barracks and and all those but of course it's in the individual na rin sir how you will cook paano ka makikisama how do you belong paano yan? and how do you do you prove Now you are not a liability that you are part of the team and you are there to contribute and you have something to different to offer to the table. Well, speaking of which, no, did you ever feel that there is a ceiling for female soldiers uh, in the Philippines? Um basically sir, una ang usapan diyan, um ang Pilipino kasi maternal tayo sir. No. So mahal natin nanay natin, ilaw ng tahanan, di ba? So inaalagaan natin yung mga babae. So nung una sir, nung panahon namin, we, we took the training for the Scout Ranger Orientation Course. But we were not allowed to join the regular Scout Rangers. Because ang ano nga doon, um, wala tayong facilities for females. Syempre pag nag-operate sa field sir, ang tendency ng mga lalaking kasama sa na tropa they will look out for the female. Kasi yun yung kultu- kultura natin, sir. Eh. Alagaan natin yung uh, kumbaga, ina ng tahanan. So, ganun. But, of course, now, through the years, we have now very young lieutenants na talagang, ano, sir, talagang they have proven na kaya din po talaga nilang maging one of the boys in terms of operations. So, we have um, awardees now na female, sir, na talagang may scholar din sila sa field. They were able to handle um, the rigorous operations operations condition sa field. May mga very, very significant accomplishments din sila. So, maganda, sir, ngayon that the inclusivity and diversity is now being greatly embraced by the army na rin. So, inopen na rin nila po sa females yung opportunity to be a battalion commander in the infantry and to operate in the field duty. And like noon, sir, mayroon kaming, ano, hanggang dito ka lang, artillery, yung mga medyo support, support ko kami. So, that's why nasa signal corps po ako. Mayroon akong mga mistang babae na nasa artillery, nasa uh, different fields, uh, logistics, ganyan, but not really infantry. But now, sir, it's it's open now. So wala nang unit sa military kung saan hindi maaring mag-serve ang mga babaeng soldiers? Ngayon sir, wala na po. So kay combat roles, may mga babae na frontline. Yes sir, meron na po. Okay, interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, si nurse ko mga militaries uh, with women in combat roles, no? Hindi pa nakalista doon yung Pilipinas, but of course, many countries are already listed there. Scandinavian countries, mostly Western, no, developed countries, no. But you're saying, no, dapat eh, nandun na rin yung Pilipinas na women can serve in combat roles uh, in their military, in the military. You know, you mentioned uh, inclusive yung ating military. No? Ano policy ngayon pagdating sa LGBTQ sa ating uh, armed forces of the Philippines? There is nothing really that's out there, sir. No, but we cannot say that they're not part of us now. So you know we feel naman that they're already part of our of our ranks but we accept them as they are they perform naman po accordingly as long as we follow the set rules and regulations and standards unless syempre meron tayong mga uh, certain cases that that uh, may may mangyayari then we handle it accordingly but on a regular day we treat them as co-equals regardless Uh, kasi sa U.S. military, of course, in the U.S. it became a big uh, issue. Ano? And then finally, nagkaroon pa ng legislation doon. Uh, and a policy which uh, is called the you know, don't ask, don't tell policy pagdating sa sexual orientation. So, uh, hindi, na, hindi pwedeng tanungin ng military kung ano yung sexual orientation mo. Wala, wala tayong ganung policy na don't ask, don't tell. I mean, Uh, may nagtatanong ba 
sa sa aplikante kung ano are you are you gay are you lesbian are you bisexual etc or may ganun din tayong attitude uh, or or practice or even policy about recruitment of LGBT community members in terms of a policies no SOPs and and all that wala tayong outrightly stated about these different genders no so in gender roles pa rin natin so in terms of recruitment this if you yung mga parameters natin male this height diba this ano ganun, and female this ganun so male and female pa rin po but of course um we do not explicitly as their sexual orientation mm-hmm. as long as they said they can perform and they are qualified in those roles then we give them the equal opportunity po you have a unique life journey you know as the first woman uh spokesperson of the armed forces of the philippines but you also have a journey that many women can identify with uh you've had to balance career with uh family like like so many others you no know? uh you married a batchmate sa PMA no pareho kayong class of class 2000 sa PMA no? Um, but you were widowed in 2015. Uh, uh, your your husband uh, passed away in a helicopter crash, and but you you talked about not having much time to grieve, no, because of your military duties. Um, may I ask, you know, how difficult that was, and why couldn't you take more time off to grieve then? For me, sir, no, parang it's it was like a balancing act, no. On one hand. Parang sinubo ko din talaga yung sarili ko, sir, na magtrabaho. Because um, if I grieve, my children will see na, naku, my mom cannot keep it together. So, paano na kami? Because they, they're the only one they have. no But after kasi nung mangyari yun sa husband ko, sir, my sons went directly, go they went back to school. no So, parang hindi naman fair for my part na ako yung mag-take time off and then grieve while my sons already went back to to their reg- regular whatever regular thing they do no so i have to keep it together and show them na oh sige tayo na lang pero kaya ko no kaya ko kayo itaguyod so ang 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 coping mechanism ko is to 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 do my my job accordingly but that was very challenging because during the time that that happened to my husband it was the apex summit And in the APEC summit, I was given the task to handle uh, Park Geun-hae, uh, the president of Korea. And that time, uh, there were 21 or 22 leaders in the Philippines for the APEC summit. We were the host. And there were only two females then. So, dalawa lang kami. And so, I was one the one selected for Park Geun-hae. But the thing is, she had a threat to her when she was here. So, the pressure was 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 very heavy on my part. So I had to be really, really professional and, you know, deal with it. So yung parang nika nila nun, sir, NSA nila from Korea came to the Philippines and talked to me, asking to speak to my commander because they found out that there was a threat to her life. And ang, ano kasi dun, sir, pag may VIP at nasa bansa mo siya, ang task to, to protect them and secure them will be in the host country. So napakalaki sir napakabigat nung nung role that was given me. And while at the time I should have been grieving, no? It was just a few days after that happened. So yun, I had to really keep it together. Um uh, but the thing is, na intindihan sir ng counterparts ko. And up to this day sir, I'm really very close to my counterparts in the Secret Service of Korea at that time. So parang uh we were very professional and they saw how professional i was also in terms of handling the different requirements of their their vip after a few months there is also the election na rin so nangangampanya na kami sir sa psg so we traveled a lot and, and did a lot of uh, activities so na, na, na shift yung focus ko from grieving and during that time kasi sir my husband came from the us from schooling so parang ang mindset naming magiina o wala lang si daddy, she's just, he's just in, he's still in school. Parang ganon. So kasi kababalik lang yan, sir, nung nangyari yun. Parang just a weekend after he came back. And when it was time for me, because reading is a lifelong journey, sir, no? you cannot really say when you end grief. So nag-decide ako to apply for a scholarship in Australia. So I took my master's in Australia. It's the country that offers a master's uh, scholarship with your family. So that was where we had a fresh start with my sons. 
So ang sabi nila, uh, it is a very good you know, way for you to move forward when you change everything, like your living conditions. I mean, so it was a totally new environment, like living the Australian dream. That, that is where you had a breather. And that's where I tried to heal. And I just want to uh, uh, inform our listeners and viewers that you you were assigned to be security of the South Korean president because you're with the PSG for 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 years, no? Kaya inassign kayo mag maging security ng ng VIP, no? But uh, you know, I just want to say that um, you know, hearing your story, I mean, you're, <laughs> uh, it's quite admirable that uh, you're able to meet that challenge, no? I mean, guarding a such a such an important person with a with threats you know facing that person just after you know enduring or suffering this this tragedy you know i mean it's it's enough it's hard enough for most people to to handle the cha- the challenge of the job yes yeah, sir very challenging din ang korea sir kasi ma- ano sila sir meticuloso ang korean sir they would really challenge me i don't speak korean they don't speak english pero nagkakaintindihan kami sir in terms of the language of security no so the head sec- their head security would just come to me and say uh major fire you know so this is just one word and i'm like you know i'll try to 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 show him what i would do in case there is a fire in the in the hotel you know and I would explain everything from the moment they got down from their plane, you know, and everything. So there was also a language barrier to it. But uh, for some reason, sir, nagkaintindihan naman po kami. And I guess they're really very happy because after the event, they even invited me and my family to go visit the Blue House. And we did one time. They showed us the whole palace. And, you know, it was something very light na after the, the fact that we performed the duty. And... It's not every day that that happens. Usually, sir, duty lang yan. You know, mamimit mo lang yung counterpart mo. O, oh, trabaho kayo. But after that, there's no more connection. Ang maganda, sir, tumatak ako sa kanila na to this day, sir, um, we remain in contact with one another, say hello. You're speaking of baptism of fire, no? I mean, uh, much more recently, no? Kasi ka- kauupo mo lang sa iyong position as like the public face of the armed forces. Uh... A couple of weeks ago, former president uh, Rodrigo Duterte, you know, gave a speech at a rally in Davao where he addressed the military, you no, know, and and even the police. Sinabi niya si sa sa inyo sa mga sundalo na uh, kung magkaka leche leche, uh, and then he was he was talking about uh, charter change, you no, know? he he opposed it, uh, and. Uh, he was uh he was calling on the military to stop it what was your first reaction nung narinig niyo to um ano bang were you worried na baka may sumunod sa kanya were you concerned at all for me i'm the voice of the chief of staff and so i have to learn how the chief of staff would address this kinds of situation i cannot speak my own mind i would have to you know um i'm his alter ego so looking at this situation sir um the chief of staff already said that the armed forces in mga kasundaluhan hindi kami kailangan mag loyalty check because nandi nandudon yung tiwala ni chief of staff sa bawat isang sundalo that we will remain professional, united, and non-partisan. So with this pronouncement and looking at it at that angle of how we view how how each shoulder would accept it. It serves as a reminder, no, na alam po namin ng bawat isa sa amin ang aming sinong pa ang tungkulin na paprotektahan namin ang seguridad ng bayan. So with that, yung statement po na yun ni former president serves as a reminder pa rin po para sa amin. So we take it as pinangangaralan po kami na, oh, yung inyong sinong pa ang tungkulin, huwag niyo pa rin kakalimutan. So Yes, sir. It's actually not a call to action, na magaklas or whatever. But it's more like you know, reminding each and everyone, oh, we still have to have that patriotism individually. You know, love our country and you know protect the sovereignty of our land, no matter no matter what. We will do this mission to any threat internally or externally. You know, listening to talk like that from a former president no uh 
hovering over everything is our history of coup attempts no by by the military and you know we're all aware of this i i interviewed a political scientist from UP uh, i asked him about this no ano bang risk ano bang danger pag may ganyang mga salita no coming from uh, former president uh, Duterte uh, and uh, he said well you know some some military people might think they they owe something to former president Duterte but the other side of this is sabi niya sabi ng political scientist that our military has never been as professional or non-partisan as now no so uh, sabi niya because of you know because of the lessons from the past talagang uh, napaka professional ngayon yung ating military i'm sure you'd agree with that no so <laughs> Yes, sir. Ang taas-taas po ng trust rating ng ating AFP, sir, sa ngayon. And we take that really to heart na we're really very grateful na pinagkakatiwalaan kami ng taong bayan. And we do not want to break that trust, sir. Well, thank you. That's very reassuring. No, Okay, I want to ask you now about your specialty. No? You spent many years studying cybersecurity and yun nga, uh, nagputa ka pang Australia. When you went to Australia to study, it was to study... I'm already a graduate of um, ano, sir, informa- Master's in Information Systems in UP. Uh, so when I went to Australia, sir, I had to take a different course and I had a, a heart to serving. So I took um, Master's of International Development Practice. Okay, so you have an international perspective as well. Because um, uh, napaka- sabi nga ni General Zaga- Zagala, no? uh, uh, when you were appointed, sabi niya, one reason why you were chosen is because of that specialty in cybersecurity. You've had many years in that. You have a master's nga in uh, information systems. Um, and uh, cyber warfare, of course, is, an, is a new theater of, of warfare. Now, I was just reading an article uh, about U.S. war planning naman. No? Kasi... Uh, diba? I'm U.S. and the Philippines are allies naman and common adversary is is China. So they're planning, you know, so war planning, you're imagining how, you know, war will go against, you know, your principal adversaries. Sabi ng FBI, no? Uh, na in the U.S. that they believe that um, uh, state-sponsored Chinese hackers are preparing to disrupt civilian infrastructure in the U.S. Ganun sila lalaban, no? In addition to, you know, the hardware kind of fighting you know with infantry and all of that no? um so it did disrupt daw yung um information yung communication systems sa America yung supply systems transportation systems airports etc they're preparing the US for that no and na- ako naisip ko well you know uh, tayo may problema din tayo sa China uh, and i suppose the Philippines is just as vulnerable uh, as the US if not more so no uh, but I don't see that kind of conversation happening in the Philippines no, about, you know, the possibility that China will try to disrupt, you know, civilian infrastructure. But um, kayo, sa military, what should we be preparing for in these kinds of scenarios? Um, if we look at the Philippines, sir, no, uh, it's two things. Una, hindi pa tayo ganun ka-integrated. So we're not like smart cities like, uh, di ba, pag sa Australia, kung ka sir, nasa app mo na lahat eh. No? You can see the bus coming in. It's connected to the trains. Cashless society na sila, sir. They just pay by their by, by their, their cards, their phones. So maraming ganun, sir. So yung vector of attack sa kanila in terms of technology, mas malaki. Compared sa atin, sir, na hindi pa nga tayo ganun. We're still so much into cash, and all that. But yung, yung ngayon na nagiging payment system natin, kaya nakikita natin, marami tayong issues dyan, di ba po, sa, sa scamming in terms of our new payment system. But, ang nagiging plus doon is hindi tayo ganun ka-connected pa. So, nahuhulk natin yung attack in certain clustered premises. Parang ganun, sir. Unlike, unlike sa kanila, sir, pag na-penetrate yung system nila, pasok ka na sa banking system, pasok ka na sa... So you can actually affect their economy. ba? Sa atin, sir, ang attack, attack vectors, ano siya, in silos. Kasi nga, ganun din po yung mga systems natin. And then another thing is that we are very, very heavily involved in um, social media. ba? We used to be the tech uh, the, the text capital of the world, ng text palang. So so much more now, no, that we're in so much in social media, and because we have a very big social presence, yung vectors of attacks din natin in terms of 
um and uh, ano social engineering attacks ang laki sir kaya diba di doon tayo doon tayo tina target so we look at all of these things and now since the AFP uh, sa DND sir it was declared that the the, the cyber is the fourth domain of operations along with land air and sea now we created this unit that will handle cyber operations ang cyber operations kasi sir napakalawak niya hindi lang talaga siya sa cyber domain but it also transcends to the physical domain. So ang ano natin dyan sir premise is we do not reinvent the wheel. What the other countries has experienced and learned from, we can use that to leverage and not really start from scratch. So if you look at Estonia and the attack that was done in Estonia, they created a Tallinn manual out of that. So kasi Estonia sir, talaga lahat automated na eh. No? It's somewhat like the e-government that we are envisioning now. So because they were attacked and they 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 recovered from that that's what we are also going to look into na yun na yun sir yung magiging foundation natin on how to move forward with our technology and digitalization in the Philippines. Okay, uh, Colonel Padilla you mentioned that you know the Philippines is a very big uh, social media country you know? I mean we're so we're so immersed in it no all of us are doing social media I want to ask you about TikTok, no? Because that's among the more controversial platforms, as you know. Uh, TikTok has been banned in some countries. Uh, India banned the platform altogether back in 2020, and, and, and you know, we know why, no? Because uh, uh, it's it's owned by China. Uh, although you know, uh, TikTok executives uh, tend to deny that, but you know, a lot of a lot of governments around the world believe that. It's owned and con- even controlled by by China through a company called uh, ByteDance, no. Um, and some other countries uh, have not banned the platform, but uh, in, in their countries, but they banned it on on government devices, no. Like uh, the United States, no. The U.S. has has banned the use of TikTok on devices in the mil in their military. Tayo ba? Uh, sa dami ng gumagamit ng TikTok. Uh, sa sa Pilipinas, uh, you know, even government agencies post on TikTok. Uh, media organizations like ours have a big TikTok presence. Should we be worried about TikTok? Sa AFP ban po siya, so we are not allowed to use TikTok. Um, for one, because it's an application made by China, but is not used by China. So that in itself, we say, go figure. No? So, yun. And I also have this advocacy of teaching about cybersecurity. Sa lahat, sir. No? So, I would go to the schools, I would go to embassies, uh, cooperativa, and everything. Because you not know how, yun, sir, ang kailangan na meron tayo. No? Pag alam natin how to prepare to protect ourselves, then collectively, sir, nakakaroon tayo ng barriers towards having a cyber cyber secure domain when we download applications not just tiktok ah, when we download applications the question is why does this application ask for certain um ano sir diba yung mga permissions case in point sir for example you download a flashlight app why would a flashlight app ask for permission to use your microphone to you to view your contacts to open your camera, to access it, yung mga ganun, sir. Pero tayo kasi, because it's free, and we want the service, we just say yes to everything without actually reading the, 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 the fine print. Right? So because of that, not just TikTok, but the free apps that we have in our gadgets, they have the capability to turn on our microphones, to look at us and watch us while we sleep and turn on our cameras, you know? Access our SMS send messages to our contacts because we gave them permission when we downloaded these applications. So, kung mapapansin mo dyan, sir, yung phone mo ngayon, nasa tabi mo siya, you will be speaking certain words and later, when you open your Facebook, there will be sponsored ads that connects to something that you have said. So, triggered siya, sir, to keywords. So, that is one one of the ways na uh, ano ng TikTok. So, we educate people about it. Ganon din sir yung Alexa, yung Siri, no? Just simply having that device in your home and you speak with someone, a guest that came into your house and then lo and behold, yung phone mo sir, 
would be giving you ads that are related to topics and conversations that you had. So ganun siya, sir. Uh, so we have to be wary of what we download and what permissions we do allow. Okay, that's good advice, no, uh, Colonel? But I, I, gusto ko na balikan yung sinabi mo. Just to clarify, sabi mo, you don't allow the use of TikTok in the military. I mean, specifically on military devices only because I know you, you probably get like uh, officially issued mobile phones, but everyone has a personal phone as well, no? Or or they use their official phones also for personal reasons. I mean, I know is this a is this a policy or is this something that you're just advocating? Na wag gumamit ng TikTok, kasi sa ibang bansa may policy talaga, no? Na na strictly enforced, no? Pero sa sa ating military ba talagang bawal? And then pan pano yun pinatutupad? Yes, sir. We have a directive. That we are not allowed to use TikTok, sir. So, uh, yes, sir, we follow it to the letter and we caution airing individuals on that, sir. So, th that applies to even personal mobile phones? Yes, sir. I can imagine it's hard to it, uh, monitor that, no? And, and it, so, it, ano to, honesty system na lang, no? Yes, sir. So, dapat, sir, ano, hindi talaga. Uh, sometimes, naman, sir, may mga... Um, May mga uh, commanders kami na yun yung magiging focus nila sir to really you know give um give the uh, the troops the idea of this directives to, to cascade it down to the lower units yung mga ganyan meron po kami mga ganun sir so every morning even our uh, line units yung mga master sergeant namin so yung uh, SM namin sa bawat units they give they give talks to our troops on these directives that are coming out. So to remind them of what is allowed, what is not allowed, what are the new directives that are out there. So kasama naman yung mga yan, sir. Okay, I, I know you've, you've studied uh, hacking, no? And then I read somewhere you're a certified uh, ethical hacker. Related to that, no? I, I read an article in a tech uh, website um, kind of pointing out, even criticizing the practice of many government agencies uh, to use Gmail accounts, no, as their contact uh, email addresses rather than yung official, you know, Philippine government uh, domain uh, accounts, no. Uh, and I checked, I checked um, yung AFP uh, website, and even the AFP, no, the Public Affairs Office uses a Gmail account as its main uh, contact email address, no. And I'm wondering how how you see the risk of doing this if there's any risk at all in terms of like spear phishing phishing social engineering and all all of these other hacking methodologies yes yeah, sir to put into perspective sir no we have different um networks in the afp no so i cannot divulge on operational details but we have an official afp account and you sir anything we transact officially we use our AFP mail. No? So from government to government mail, yung again, mga counterparts namin, sir, like US military counterparts, all other counterparts sir, in terms of um, controllership and all those things. Yung Gmail namin, sir, is for ease of use no? to, to connect to the general public. So pwede kasi, sir, yung, yung mas madaling magpalitan ng mail to that if it is not classified. So anything that is classified, sir, we have certain networks that we are use and we, we are using, and uh, we have a policy for that as well. So there's no risk, for example, of like inserting an extra letter there in the you know paoafp at gmail .com, because that's usually you know one method of doing that. Just and then for someone pretending to be your office, uh, and then trying to get information, let's say from you know journalists or or whatever. I mean. It, you don't think there's a a big risk of that of that happening? Um, hindi naman natin matatanggal yung risk, sir, no? So, ang lagi namin sinasabi, there is no impenetrable system to a dedicated hacker. So, pag meron po talagang may gustong gawing anomalia in the cyber domain, they can do it. It is just a matter of time. So, even our networks that we fortify, it's just on how we really put so much security measures in place. But to a dedicated hacker, sir, it will just take more time. We have to really fortify our defenses at the utmost. So foremost is education. So talagang tutuan natin sila na 
o pagka malicious yung email, hindi nyo kilala, huwag nyo nang i-click yung link. Huwag nyo nang i-open yung link. And really, really be wary of links because actually, sir, talaga, link talaga ang, ano, ang salarin. Kaya nga po, yung telcos natin, nakausap na rin natin sila. Yung so we have really good partnerships with them. And now, sir, if you can uh, notice, no, hindi na na-access ang link through SMS. No? So, yun yung mga securities that we are taking into play. Yes, yes sir. So yun nga no in one of the profiles about you you were you were called a certified ethical hacker That's among your credentials no totoo ba uh, colonel you're you're certified as an ethical hacker i mean ano ano bang ibig sabihin nito um it's a training sir no uh, it's a training of how to hack systems but you are certified that you know you passed the requirements of that. So there's an examination after the training and it's it's internationally accredited. But actually, sir, honestly, it's a misnomer because there's nothing ethical in hacking. Um, it's termed ethical because uh, we, the hackers, they, they wear three hats, no? So there's a black hat, hat, hat hacker. Yan po yung mga talagang uh, sabi natin masasamang loob, no? I-hack ka nila, kukunin yung credit card details mo or anything to that effect. No, and 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 you know, sell it. Uh, and then the white hat hackers, that's the ethical hackers. I mean, if you're a bank, you would hire me and say, Oh, this is my banking system. Can you please try to hack it any way you can? And then do you tell them how you made how you did it? And because of that, kasi meron lang laging butas yan, sir, eh. meron lang laging paraan to a dedicated hacker. So that you really would dedicate all the necessary ways you can do it and try to hack their system. And then you tell the bank, oh, hey, I did it somewhat like this and this. So you are weak in this sort of your ports are open, something like that. No, So when we do that and tell them how to fortify themselves, that's the that's the role of an ethical hacker. Uh, okay. I mean, it makes sense, no? Kasi syempre, parang tinetest mo yung sistema, no? If somebody, yes. And somebody has to be qualified has to have the competence to do that no so uh, i get it i get it uh, kasi yung hacking skills can be used for both bad and good diba in 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 your case i mean you're trained to make sure that systems are secure so that the bad the bad guys aren't able to to in, uh trespass kumbaga so uh, i want to thank you uh, colonel no for for this enlightening conversation and uh, and your time for sharing your time and most of all thank you for your service colonel francel padilla first woman spokesperson of the armed forces of the philippines mabuhay kayo maraming maraming salamat po maraming salamat sir howie thank you for having me hi i'm howie severino check out the howie severino podcast new episodes will stream every thursday listen for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. <laughs>